Hey everybody, I watched a few toolbox videos lately and I thought you'd give you mine. This is the stuff I use for home repair and remodeling. Probably allows me to do, you know, 75 or 80 percent of the stuff I do. My plumbing gear is in another kit and maybe that's another video, but let's get right to it. So this is one of my favorites. This is a Tajima self-retracting chalk line. Blows people's minds the first time they ever see it. This is a scratch-all. Carpenter's tool that goes back, you know, 100 years. Used for making holes. You can use it to hold the uh, end of the chalk line if you're working by yourself. It's just a handy thing for poking and prying at stuff. Checking for rot, use it for that. This is a hook blade roofing knife for cutting uh, shingles off of rakes and for cutting hip shingles and cap shingles. Works better than a regular utility knife because of the hook blade. I'm still looking for the perfect pair of aviation snips, but this is the closest I've found in many years of trying. These are by uh, Fiskars, and what I like about them is they have an easy to use lock, right? The only problem is when you stick it in the tool belt, it tends to open, the, release the lock and then they open, which is kind of frustrating. But these work really well, and the compound uh, lever design makes them a little easier to squeeze when you're cutting thick material. I got a couple chisels in here. This is the better of the two. Uh, it still needs to be sharpened, but I found these uh, Stanley contractor grade to be pretty good. They're a little tough to find now, but they got a metal cap so you can hit it with a regular hammer. So I don't use this a lot, but when I do, it's the right tool for the job. This is a staple lifter, and like if you're pulling up carpet, you can use this to get the staples out of the padding. Or if you're pulling down stapled up insulation. Don't use this a lot either, but it's a perfect tool for the metal knockouts and metal electrical boxes. Uh, you can bang them out of there and then pry them. It's also good for large electrical fittings because they always have straight screws. And you can use it for prying once in a while. Moving along, two pairs of vice grips. I like the uh, having both sets. The standard jaws I sometimes use as a rip guide on my circular saw, which is a trick I learned from Chuck Miller many years ago. Moving along, got uh, needle nose pliers for electrical work, regular slip joint pliers for tightening and loosening things. And I love these. I bought these was when I was in my 20s, but these are duckbill needle nose pliers, and they're a little harder to find than the standard jaws, but boy, they are super handy for all kinds of stuff. And then I have two, well, actually three types of electrical strippers for electrical work. I love electrical work and I love electrical tools because they are made for one thing generally. So this is for like bell wire and thermostat wire. It's got the real small uh, gauge uh, holes. This is for 14 and 12 wire, which is the most common residential wiring. This cuts the outer insulation. It strips the wires. It cuts screws and re-threads them. It's got needle nose pliers on the end. It's just a fantastic set of strippers. These are from Klein. And then if I need to do larger conductors, I have another set and this one is an ideal. And it has all the same features. It also cuts off screws and you can crimp terminals with these. Um, they're a little dull, but they've, they've held up for years. I have a 100 foot tape measure in here. Don't use it very often, but when you need it, it's the only thing that works. A um, couple putty knives, one that's a real beater and one that's in a little better shape. These are the best diagonal cutting pliers to buy. Uh, these are Klein's. They're angled. They allow you to pry and cut nails, uh, pull out electrical cable staples, uh, cut off screws. They are just supremely useful and the ones with the blue handles stay way sharper than the ones with the red handles. They last much longer. Uh, I guess this is a six-way screwdriver because they count the nut drivers in the end, but two Phillips, two straight, and then two nut drivers. Does almost everything you need to. When I'm working in electrical panels, I like to use this because it's insulated. It prevents you from touching something and getting shocked or sh causing a short. This is also made by uh, Klein. When I'm in a jam and need a saw, this is a handy little gadget. This takes recip saw blades, and I use this for you know making a cut in drywall. If you need to cut off something 
um, metal. You can use metal cutting blades. I have wood cutting blades and metal cutting blades in there. And it's, it's, a, it's the saw that you use when you don't have the right saw. <laughs> but we have all been there, I'm sure. A little wire brush for cleaning stuff off. Um, razor scraper for pulling off labels and paint. I carry a roll of cheap electrical tape because it's very good for all kinds of stuff. And then the other side of the box is the catch-all. And I have not yet to find the right tool system that has checks all my boxes. This is something I've uh, switched to from using a bucket boss that I used for years. But I got a couple different kinds of gloves in here. These, these are framing version of uh, ironclad gloves. They have the fingertips cut off so you can grab nails and screws. I keep one glove inside the other which prevents you from losing them and it prevents you from having to rummage through to find the other one in the bottom of the toolkit. This is my uh, Fluke multimeter. Uh, it has clamp-on uh, capabilities for measuring current without uh, having to uh, risk exposed conductors. Super handy tool. It has the leads in the kit. The case is pretty good and protects it from getting damaged while it's running around in here. Speed square, combination square. For years I used cheap combination squares and finally bucked up for this stare it. It is totally worth it. It locks in position and doesn't move. Uh, it slides easily and precisely. Totally worth the expense. Winter gloves. Um, this is my favorite tape measure, Fat Max. Uh, this one has the mag magnetic end, which is occasionally handy. But you have to be careful not to get like metal chips on there. If I use this in the gravel in my driveway, it picks up things and can throw off measurements. So you need to be wary of that. So this is the hammer I've been using for a couple decades. Uh, it's 20 ounce, but what I really love about it is the small head. And if you're doing electrical work, you know it's difficult to drive nails into tight stud cavities. And this seems to fit better than anything else I've tried. Uh, it's also got the rip claw, which is, as anyone knows, is the right one to get. And uh, it's been really super, super awesome. This is a Vaughn. I don't remember the model number, but it's been great. I carry a little block of hard maple for beating on stuff that uh, can't be dented by the hammer face. And uh, I ease the edges so you don't get splinters on it. But like for uh, opening up a door jam, uh, you know, to beat on the hinge side, you know, perfect tool. Stud finder works occasionally. String for layout work. Checking straight straightness. Uh, torpedo level. I use this primarily for like straightening electrical boxes and wall plates and that kind of stuff. Um, it's magnetic, so you can use it on uh, steel pipe, but it's not big enough to be really useful. I occasionally use it for uh, stair treads and that kind of stuff, but you got to have a torpedo level. My favorite block plane, Veritas. Uh, Apron plane, I like it because it's lighter, perfectly machined, just works really well. And those of you who are wondering, I retract the blade so it doesn't get damaged while it's in there. This used to be my favorite plane until I got the apron plane, but this is a good second choice. Um, you can make these pretty sharp and they're pretty true. And I think this is like 50 bucks instead of 100. Sureform, only use this for uh, fitting pieces of drywall. It's not good for anything else really, but it is the perfect tool for uh, shaving down a piece that's too big. Big honking channel locks. Buying anything smaller than this is just not worth it. I use this for plumbing work and all kinds of stuff, and uh, you really need that much jaw capacity to be useful. Uh, Japanese style cat's paw, nice tool. The, what you look for in these is it's got to have really thin, sharp jaws. And uh, this is the perfect tool. This thing is like meant to dimple around a, a framing nail that's driven below the surface and it makes a recess that you can more easily grab it with the foot itself. So this is my spare utility knife. Right, you gotta have two because inevitably you're gonna be on a job site and you're gonna lose one. So I carry two 
And uh, what's special about this one is that you can use it to cut thick, rigid insulation materials because of the snap-off blade. This is made by Tajima. Uh, it's the Rock Hard series. Super good tools made by Tajima. I love this thing. I've had this for years. Uh, stiff putty knife. I only use this to remove moldings, baseboard, separate shoe mold from baseboard, pry off casing. It's a great thing to slip behind the molding and then you can actually use another bar, right, flat bar, and you can pry on this so you don't mar the wall or the floor or whatever you're prying against. And I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but that's also in there, right? You gotta have a flat bar in your toolkit. This is supremely useful. T-bevel for measuring and marking angles, right? Super useful. I've been through a couple versions of this. I, I don't know if I've ever found the perfect one. Uh, this one is by Empire. It's not terrible. Ten inch uh, crescent wrench. This is a reed. Super heavy duty. It's actually a twelve inch. Um, Ten or twelve is fine. I, I like this one. It's really, really, really well made tool. Carry a spare tape measure. Um, this one's a little weird. This is one of Fast Caps versions, and you can write on the face your measurements or take notes. But what's cool about this thing is it's flat, and uh, it's not very useful for normal carpentry. But if you're trying to measure curved things, it's supremely useful, and you can actually mark on the blade for repetitive measurements. And I don't use it a lot, but when you need it, it's the right tool for the job. Five and one tool, prying, scraping, digging out caulking, uh, scraping out roller covers, uh, super useful, uh, putting on putty. And then this is a glazing tool. It's just meant for installing window glazing. I probably don't need to keep it in here, but it's just as good a place as any to put it in there. And finally, so I carry a three-prong adapter, right, in case you are in an old house and you need to plug in. Carry spare blades for the uh, Tajima knife. I carry some um, earplugs. Finally, last part of the setup here. Got a good utility knife with a quick change blade. I got another razor scraper in there, same as the other one. Um, rather than carry razor blades, I carry two scrapers. And uh, a tiny combination square from Lee Valley. And if you're doing finished carpentry, this is a wonderful tool. Uh, it's often very difficult to hold a normal sized combination square uh, with a small reveal, right? It gets, you have the huge blade sticking out, right? When you're doing a little blade, it's, it's just awkward and hard to hold it in position. This makes it a lot easier. Joy to use. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, a couple more things. So I got uh, graphite lubricant for locks and lock sets couple size nail sets, couple carpenters pencils. I usually have a uh, number two pencil in there too, but I broke it the last time I put the tools away and haven't replaced it. If you have any questions about any of the stuff that's in here, please uh, leave a comment or drop us a line and I'll be happy to answer uh, what made me pick one version of one of these tools versus another. And uh, if you have any ideas for future videos, let us know.